Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu ta'ala wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla la wa man yudlil fala hadiya la wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi amma ba'du fa inna asdaq al hadith kitabullahi azza wa jal wa khayr al hadi wa khayr al hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharr al umur muhdathatuha wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah wa kullu bid'atin dalalah wa kullu dalalatin fi an-nar wa ba'd indeed our praise is due to allah we praise him we beseech him and we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evilness of our desires and the evilness of our deeds whoever allah has guided there's no one to mislead whoever he has led astray there is no guide for them i publicly bear witness that there is no deity worthy their worship except allah he is one and doesn't have any partners as i bear witness that muhammad ibn abdullah is his servant and his final messenger is his worship and his final messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as for what follows for indeed the most truthful of all speech is the book of allah and the finest and best of guidance is the guidance of muhammadan sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the most evil is of affairs are those affairs that are newly are affairs of newly introducing things to the religion or novelties to the religion for all novelties will lead to innovation every innovation will lead to misguidance and all misguidance sending places to hellfire aad and allah wa yakum min an-nar may allah protect us and you from the hellfire i mean on the last we returned back to our book after counseling counseling canceling the class last Wednesday because of the inclement weather it was snowing a lot that day and it's from the sunna to cancel classes in weather in bad weather as the prophet used to do this and the salaf so from there and he will order the muadhin when inclement weather and when he calls the adhan instead of saying hayya ala salat hayya ala salat they say which means come to prayer come to prayer they will be ordered to say sallu fi rihalikum sallu fi rihalikum pray in your homes pray in your homes that's a sunnah mahjura that's an abandoned sunnah in these times and these days except whom Allah has blessed to revive that sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we was in our book on the fiqh of the salah and we was covering the arkan the pillars of the salah and we was in the pillar which is the third pillar is qira'atul fatiha the reciting of al fatiha because of the statement of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la salata liman lam yaqra yaqra bi fatihatul kitab that there is no prayer for the one who does not recite the opening of the book or this in the statement of the prophet man salla salatan whoever prays any prayer lam yaqra fiha bi fatihatul kitab and he does not recite in that prayer the opening of the book fa hiya khidajun fa hiya khidajun ghayru ta ghayru tamam the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said whoever prays any prayer and he doesn't recite in that prayer al fatiha the mother of the opening of the book then his prayer is deficient then his prayer is deficient and is not complete is not complete khidaj yani naqis naqis um his prayer is deficient ghayru tamam and is not complete whether that be of obligatory prayer or voluntary prayer that's a pillar of the prayers we all know last we talked about in this class we was referring to the issue of when the imam you in you are ma'mum you are following behind the imam in the salat and the imam yaqra al fatiha jahran he recites al fatiha out loud as we just did in maghrib in the first raka and the second raka as we do in the two rakats of fajr as we do in the first two rakats of isha that when the prophet recite out loud 
Is it upon the ma'mum, the follower of the imam, to recite al-fatiha in the out loud aspects of the prayer of the behind the imam or not? We said the scholars differ. Um, three of the four a'imma, three of the four a'imma, Imam Malik, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi'i, and Hanbali. Out of the four of them, three of them is of the position that you don't recite behind the Imam when he recites out loud. The Hanbali is of the position that you repeat behind the Imam. This is something the scholars differ about. And we brought evidence for that from the evidence <clears throat> that you don't recite behind the Imam is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is actually a couple hadiths from the Prophet. One of those hadiths of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it was narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Abu Huraira narrated that In Sarafan Min Salatin, Afwan, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leading the companions in the Salat of Fajr. And he turned around and said, Hal qara a ma'i man minkum ahadun anifan, anifan. <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Did any one of you recite with me from amongst you just now in the prayer? Fakala Rajalun, a man said, Naam, yes. Ana ya Rasulullah. It was me, O Messenger of Allah. Fakala, the Messenger of Allah says, Inni akulu, mali unaza. The Messenger of Allah said, Indeed, I say, what is the problem that I'm being competed with? I'm being argued with, meaning somebody reciting while I'm reciting. What is wrong with me that I'm being competed with? That's one hadith. Meaning, مَا لِي أُدَاخَلُوا فِي الْكِرَاءَ وَأُغَالَبُوا عَلَيْهَا As the scholars have explained it, this means who is reciting, entering in recitation with me and who is conquering, overwhelming my recitation. Who is doing that? That was the question of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. قَالَ أَبُوْ هُرَيْرَ Abu Huraira, he said, the people stop reciting behind the Messenger of Allah. And that which the Messenger of Allah recited out loud. In recitation. When they heard the Prophet make this statement. When they heard this, when they heard that, من رسول الله, from the Messenger of Allah. وَقَرَأُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ سِرًّا فِي مَا لَا يَجْهَرُ فِيهِ الْإِمَامِ and Abu Huraira himself, he said, they would recite within themselves privately in that which the Imam was not out loud with in the prayer. Is that clear? That's one hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's another hadith that Abu Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates. And um, it's a good thing. That we bring in this hadith because we're going to respond to a question that we was asked about. And it wasn't this hadith. It was another hadith. The other hadith is the statement of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that our the companion, Abu Huraira, narrated that the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Inna ma imam li The Imam has only been put in his position to be followed. فَإِذَا كَبَّرَ When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, فَكَبِّرُوا Then say you all Allahu Akbar وَإِذَا قَرَأَ And this is the burden of proof here هذا هو الشاهد This is the evidence The Prophet Sallallahu said And when the Imam recites فَأَنصِتُوا Be quiet Don't recite out loud And this was the statement of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And this came about From the Prophet Abu Huraira narrated When the ayah was revealed وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنصِتُوا That when the Qur'an is recited, then listen and pay attention. General statement of Allah. Prophet then this occurred and he made this statement. 
the other hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those two hadiths we just quoted from Abu Hurairah. The third hadith is from Jabir ibn Abdullah. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And this hadith of Jabir, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man kana lahu imamun, whoever has an imam, meaning in the salah. Man kana lahu imamun, whoever has an imam. فَقِرَاءَةُ imam lahu qira'a. The recitation of the imam, meaning out loud, is for him enough recitation. Is for him enough recitation. And I have fi fil jahriya. This is in the out loud prayer. Now, this, all of these hadiths is authentic. Um, Sheikh al Bani goes into detail about the different chains of narration of this hadith, which ones is authentic and which one is not, right? The issue was arise from our beloved brother who's a student of knowledge. May Allah bless him. When he asked the question that Abu Huraira was questioning, who narrated those of the first two hadiths. He narrated those other first two hadiths. Not this one. This hadith that I quoted last week or two weeks ago is a hadith that's by Jabir ibn Abdullah. But the other two hadiths. When he narrated with the prophet, said, who is competing with me in the prayer? Intermixing in my recitation and all of that. And the narration when the prophet said, either cut out imam When the imam recite, be quiet. Okay? Those two narrations from Abu Huraira. So Abu Huraira was questioned. Su'ila Abu Huraira min al-tabi'i. One of the tabi'i followers of the companions asked Abu Huraira. He said, oh, Abu Huraira, ماذا asna? What do I do? Either cut out imam jahran. Hal akra al-fatiha? He said, if the imam recites out loud, the man asked Abu Huraira, should I recite al-Fatiha? Abu Huraira told him to do it, whisper it, to say it secretly. So the brother asked this question, since Abu Huraira is the one who narrated this hadith, doesn't that show you still got to recite al-Fatiha in spite of the fact the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said that in the hadith, and he's the one who narrates the hadith. That was the question, correct? Well, the answer to that question, may Allah preserve Sheikh Muhammad, uh, Sheikh Nasr al-Din al-Albani. This book of his is in three volumes. This is volume one. It's at the end of volume one, right? And the end of volume one, it ends with approximately 410 pages. And it's three volumes, and each volume is like that. One of them a little more than the other. There's no book in existence, no one book that covers the Salat like Sheikh al-Albani's book. That's why it's called, he named it, Sifatul Salatul Nabi Ka'annaka Tarahu. The description of the Prophet's prayer as if you're looking at him, as if you're seeing him, because that's how detailed it is. Everything, he brings it, and he clarifies what's authentic from what's not authentic, what the different statements of the scholars about these narrations, the ayat, he covers it all. No book like this. Alhamdulillah. Not before Shaykh al-Albani, not during his lifetime, and not till this day. There's no book like this book. <coughs> <coughs> and Shaykh Nasr al-Din al-Albani, his response to your question was that we can never use the actions of a companion as an argument of proof for anything. Because everyone يُخْطِئُ وَيُصِيبُ إِلَّا صَاحِبُ الْقَبْرِ النَّبِي Everyone makes mistakes and is accurate. And when it comes to the deen of Islam, except for the Messenger of Allah, he was ma'soom, he was infallible when it came to the religion. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? But anybody that came after him, it's not infallible. They correct and they make mistakes. So we can never use another human being other than the messenger of Allah as a proof himself. So his statement is not a proof because Abu Huraira was the same man, radiallahu anhu, and Shaykh al-Albani brings this. He says Abu Huraira was questioned. You know, when a dog lick your clothing, what are we supposed to do? Or lick your bowl or lick something of yours, how are we supposed to clean it? Based on what the Prophet told us. Anybody knows? 
If a dog lick your utensils or lick your clothing or lick anything you possess and you go to wash it, how yeah. are we supposed to wash it? Wash it seven times. Wash it seven times and well, then what are we supposed to do the first time? Clean it with dirt. Wipe, clean it with dirt first and then seven times with water. That's what the Prophet Sallallahu said. One hadith mentioned eight times and one time with water. Okay? Abu Huraira, when he was questioned, he's the narrator of this hadith. When he was questioned about it, he said, do it three times. That's it. And he narrated this hadith. It's not known of us, except that you may forget a narration when being questioned. That's why you got to know you had the person's evidence. Because we in we human beings. How many times somebody, we knew something, somebody asked us, and we gave them a different answer. And then we were like, oh my God, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And when you knew the answer. And I'm talking about something just everyday affair. The scholar's not exempt from this mistake. That's why they say, La don't take from us. Until you know the time for daily, so you know our evidence, and that's the truth. So that's the response but the first to that question. Times, if I may, mm -hmm. reminds me, like for example, they said, "Don't try to speak loudly to confuse the imam." Mm -hmm. So the, if I understood both of them, mm -hmm. like you know, don't, if the imam is doing it, don't don't do it loudly. Mm. Whispering or in your heart. Is not is is not what I understood because the first two things that you said, okay, don't say it loudly because Imam is reciting it. I shouldn't, as you say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. I also start saying Alhamdulillah. So you are bound to, you know, get the, you know. Well, conflict. you forget the rest of the hadith in the first narration. Abu Huraira said they stopped reciting behind the prophet when he recited out loud. Okay, that's so one. So that's Two, one. and the second hadith he narrated, prophet said, Ida qara a, when the imam recites, ansitu, pay attention. Mm -hmm. So Shaykh al-Albani argues. He says, wait a minute. So you're trying to tell me you only supposed to pay attention to when the Quran recited, to everything the Quran recited, except for al-Fatiha. And what's the greatest sort of the Quran? Al-Fatiha. So the most greatest sort of you you supposed to recite it while the imam is reciting. So then they bring the argument, well, you recite it in between the imam pauses. You know, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Recite then. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawmiddin. Okay. Let's say that's the truth. Where's the evidence for that? If this was what we supposed to do, it, you don't think it would have reached us? The companions did that behind the prophet. It never reached us. The Shafi is sometimes they say, Imam says Fatiha, then he kept silent, gives you an opportunity. That also must be an. This is a statement he he Sheikh al Albani deals with that issue. Yeah. The sector is called sector. The sector of the prophet wasn't long enough for that. Okay, so, so this the, the evidence. All the evidence is indicative to the last hadith. Just listen. Man kana lahu imamun, whoever has an imam, fa qira'atu hu lahu qira'ah. Fa qira'atu imam lahu qira'ah. The recitation of the imam is sufficient for you as recitation, meaning in an out loud prayer. Those other evidence support it. First the Quran and the Messenger of Allah. What did Aisha say was his character? Quran. Was the Quran. And what Allah says, Ida Quri al Quran. Then Allah says, Ida Quri al Quran illa fa al Fatiha. Allah then Allah says, if the Quran is recited except for al Fatiha, fa stemiru lahu wa ansitu. Listen to it and pay attention. Why? Because the objective of the Quran is what? To dabbur. Pondering over what it's saying. So it can affect your life. That's the goal of the Quran. Right? Like Allah Ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Do they not ponder over the Qur'an? Or is upon their hearts, أَقْفَالُ It's upon their hearts as locks. Or the statement, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مُبَارَكٌ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مُبَارَكٌ We sent down to you a blessed book. أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ Oh, I'm skip the eye is escaping me right now. You could probably help me if you could remember the eye. 
Because it comes a couple places in the Quran. Aywa, aywa, you go. Kitabun and Zalna who ilayka mubarakun liyat dabbaru. We reveal to you, Muhammad, a bus book so that they may ponder deeply over his meaning. So, he, so why not? Allah then tells us, when the Quran is recited, listen to it. What unsitu? Unsitu is paid attention. One is listening, the other one is giving it your full attention. You know what I'm saying? Why? So it can, la'allakum turhamun. So mercy can descend upon you. And what is that mercy? Allah put mercy in your heart to love his worship of him and being obedient to him. So the Quran can impact your life. So all the adilla, and there's more evidence than this, is indicative towards this position. That's why the, out of the four imams, three of them take that position. You know, so, and it's, it's, it's a greater detail about that issue, but I'm going to stop there. We're going to move on, inshallah ta'ala. This third pillar Al Fatiha, the Sheikh, he talks further about Al Fatiha. He says, um, The Prophet, sallam, no doubt, there's a hadith of the Messenger of Allah, sallam, but this portion of the hadith is not authentic. Most people don't know this. Where well, the Messenger of Allah, sallam, had mentioned, Perhaps you are reciting behind your imam. And then the Prophet وسلم, and the companion said, Yes, similar to the hadith we mentioned before. He says, La tafa'alu, don't do that. Illa bi fatihatil kitab, except with the opening of the book. For there's no prayer for the person who don't recite with it. Now, inshallah ta'ala, this hadith, for those who deem it authentic, it comes, this other hadith came after it, as well known from the scholars of hadith. And from there, the author then goes on, he says, reciting al-Fatiha is rukran, is as what has proceeded as being a pillar of the prayer. That the person, when he recites, now he's going to get into how you recite al-Fatiha and the meaning of al-Fatiha. He says, so when a person recites al-Fatiha, he begins it with seeking refuge of Allah. Seeking refuge. Saying, rajim. He begins with that, right? And then he says, But before he says, rajim, He, before that is al istiftah The dua of opening after the takbir. You make the dua. And as we said before, we mentioned it was like seven or eight, seven narrations, different ways of openings or istiftah, dua al-istiftah, the supplication of opening the prayer that you say to yourself before starting al-Fatiha, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, any one of them is the, is the easiest, it's, I mean, any one of them we can recite, and the most simplest and easiest of them is the dua that most Muslims memorize, subhanakumah, bihamdik, Glory to you, O Allah, by your praises. Bless or possess, but gives out much bounty. Gives out much bounty. Gives out much bounty. Your name. Lofty is your majesty, and there is no deity in truth other than you. To say this dua. That's from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the most shortest and one of the most authentic of narrations. From amongst them is the narration we people then memorize the most after that short one. I'm quite sure most of you know that one, right? Right? Subhanahu wa hamdi, tabaraka smuk, ta'ala jaktu, la ilaha ilaha right? Yes, that's the most memorized by the Muslims. The next most memorized is, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya. O oh Allah, make distance between me and between my sins, just like you made distance between the East and the West. Just like you've made distance between the East and One of the virtues of this hadith, this dua, when asking Allah to make distance between you and your sins, we benefit from this a lot. Like you make 
the distance between the east and west. Why, why do you think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh Allah, this, make distance or distance between me and my sins like you have made the distance between the east and west? Why would he use the analogy, the method of the east and west? East and west will never meet. That's the reason. East and west will never meet. If I go on east and I say, okay, I'm going to veer off a little to the west, what's going to happen to my eastern journey? I never get there, <laughs> right? You never get there. So, this example that the Messenger of Allah is, is teaching us to say in this dua, it should make us the first thought. And this is a beautiful thing because me, I say these two more than I say any supplication. I say both of them. And when I say Allahu Akbar and I begin to say that dua and I'm thinking about it, it changes my state of being of my prayer. Because the first one, subhanakum wa bihamdi, is all praising Allah, thinking about the magnificence and perfection of Allah. And to tufakkir fi kibriya illa wa azamatihi. You're thinking about the magnificence of Allah, which in turn make you realize how insignificant you really are. Right? And then you set out to then acknowledge your humanity in front of Allah. I'm a sinner. You say, Allahumma ba'id bayni wa bayna khatayaya kama ba'id ta bayna mashraqi wa maghrib. Oh Allah, take distance between me and my sins like you made distance between the east and west. Again, here the Prophet is describing us with an important principle that we need to understand about sins. That the description of the believer is he avoid and distance himself from his sins. From sins. That's how strong. We do not only com not commit sins, we try to stay Distant from sins. Like Allah described the believers. All through the Quran. Those who avoid, we always translate it, avoid major sins. But the Arabic, meaning they don't go nowhere near it. They stay distant. Like, who was the best example of that after the message of Allah? Was Umar ibn Khattab. He was so distant from disobedience. That shaitan would cross the street. If he saw him in one direction, he'd go another. Because he Allah caused the distance to be far between him and disobedience. And what is this teaching us? That the more you strive to obey Allah, the more you strive to stay away from disobedience of Allah, the more Allah will make it easier for you to do that in your life. Whenever you find yourself struggling to be obedient to Allah and is always close to you, this is a sign of there's something wrong with your heart. The more you stay away from sin, Allah start to make you a furqan, a criteria between right and wrong. You'll be so distant from it. You don't even be attracted to it. You don't want to go near it. That's why you find in all the hadiths, like the prophet prohibited us from sitting with people who drink alcohol. You can't sit with them. You don't go near sin. Why you don't go near sin? Because if you're near it, you will eventually be affected by it. You will eventually be affected by it. And how did, because that's how we start going near it. Uh, when you near it a lot, you start playing it down. It's not that bad because you're seeing it all the time. How many of time have we have, we hear the hadith about the importance of law when Allah says, Yeah, you had Ladina Aminu. He Allah tells us, Oh, you who believe, to what? To Ruddu Abasaraku, to lower your gaze. How many of us lower our gaze to what Allah don't want you to look at? And I'm not just talking about women now, in our case. When you see things happening as haram, even though you're not doing it, part of distancing yourself from it is turning away from it, not even looking at it. That's going to keep the hatred of it in your heart. So this, under, this is a thick uh, understanding about Iman that is important for us to be familiar with. That's why I used to see scholars like Imam Ahmed who used to say, I hate looking at the Jews and Christians. I hate looking at the people who invent lies on Allah and says he has a son. Where are we at in that regards? We not only don't just don't hate it, we have them as friends. <laughs> Many of us. So it's important to understand these this aspect. So when you make a dua like this, this is what you're asking for. And then you go on, you say, 
Allahumma naqini min khatayaya. Oh Allah, cleanse me from my sins. Kama yunaqqa thawb al-abiyadu min ad Just as a white thawb, cloth, cloth, is cleansed from filth. Allahumma ghsilni min khatayaya. Oh Allah, wash away, wash me from my sins. Bithalji wal ma'i wal barad. With ice, snow, with water, and cold. Those are one of the greatest killers of germs. That's the greatest virtue of the wintertime. It kills the germs. Whereas summer breeds germs, the heat. Whereas cold, it kills germs. So look how far in this dua the Prophet went to for the eradication of sins because sins is what weakens your iman. Sins is what make you one day hate the haram to one day loving it. Sins is from the things that you go from being the most furthest away from it to being the closest to it. And this is important for us to understand as Muslim. That's why the Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, our fires, that we're not supposed to see each other lifestyles. Disbelievers and believers. I know we live here, but you know what the Muslims are supposed to have been doing when we came here? For my own communities. Who does that best in the United States? They come to this country and they formulate their own communities. It's the Jews. They got living communities. We're supposed to be first and foremost in that. Because our lifestyles is completely different. And we don't get that. The Muslims don't get that. We mix and mingle with them. And we watch our children get lost into the society. In the name of gaining money and wealth. And position and status. When are we supposed to be living with one another? And from what I read. Countries like Pakistan. Bangladesh. Became independent countries. Be initially started with them not wanting to live with the kuffar, live with one another, following the legislation of Islam, and it turned into a country. This is what I read. Y'all should know your history better than I do. But those were different Muslims than the Muslims today, unfortunately. So this is what is meant. So the Sheikh then goes on, he says, uh, and we're going to stop with this. The Sheikh then says, so the Prophet Sallallahu will open up with this also before, before in his obligatory prayers and, his, and he did other supplications in his voluntary prayers. And the believer recites what has been made easy for him. And he goes into the meaning. He says, you say, Subhanak Allahumma, glory to you, O Allah. It means, meaning, O Allah, I free you from any in deficiencies and imperfect qualities that is not befitting of your majesty. Because the word subhanAllah, it means to unadulterate something, to free something from anything that's imperfect. That's what the word subhanAllah means. He says, uh, you say, um, and by your praise, meaning be thana in alay, that I'm freeing you from these imperfect qualities while praising you, O Allah. So you're freeing Allah from imperfections and that which is attributed to him by the disbelievers, having a son, a daughter. You know, like in the Bible, I read the Bible, I saw a, a verse in, a, in the Bible that Allah wrestled with one of his prophets and lost. Yeah. And the prophet, so Allah gave him the secrets of the unseen. Jacob. This, we free Allah from this. Had a subhanallah. While, while praising you. With your praise. Meaning while praising Allah. Yani, uthni alayka ma'atasbi. Meaning I'm praising you Allah along with freeing you from imperfections. Tabara kesmuk. People translate that as blessed is thy name or blessed is your name. And that's the incorrect translation. The translation is meaning blessings is obtained with mentioning your name. You understand? We don't, there's no need to say blessed is thy name. Ugh. Allah is the, he is blessed. Yeah. Meaning he provides blessings. Okay. Um, yani, jet, he says, 
بلغ يعني بلغ الاسم في البركة النهاية meaning the name of Allah has reached the highest levels of achieving bounties from it just saying the name of Allah that's why it's important and I say to brothers that who's professors when you go before your class don't leave off beginning with Bismillah Alhamdulillah saying these things before you give your classes before you give presentations so Allah bless what you do he put blessings upon what you do inshallah ta'ala and everything that we do that's righteous and of good good things. Um, and then he says, For every blessing is obtained by the name of what the name of Allah. Or be fully in his bounties. Or ihsani and the ex Allah treating one excellently. Meaning you get more you get better treatment from Allah towards you in your life when you say his names. What ta'ala jadduk. Lofty is your majesty. Yani Adamatika, the majesty, the magnificence of Allah, Jeddallah, Yani Adamat, the magnificence of Allah is Ta'ala, is lofty and high. I Meaning there's nothing more loftier, nothing more in magnificence than Allah. We, so that what does that mean for the believer? We never allow anything we see and experience in this dunya that we magnify greater than Allah. You understand? As Allah Ta'ala tells us in the Quran that and that and whoever meaning the rights of hajj and all the things of the symbols of the thing and those who magnify the signposts and symbols of Allah that the, Allah says for in, indeed that is when taqwa al-qulub it's from the taqwa of you that's the sign of your taqwa when you give high importance and magnification to what Allah has legislated for us to do is that clear? and we're going to finish with this dua he says Yani Jedduk means Adamatuk or Kibriyauk, his magnificence. Wala ilaha gayruk, and there is no deity and truth except you. Yani al ma'la, that meaning al ma'bud bihaqqin, that he is the thing that is deified and worshipped in truth and reality. Just as Allah Ta'ala mentions in Surah Al Hajj, verse 62, that it can be anna Allah hu al haqqa. That indeed, then that is because Allah, He is the truth and reality. And that which they worship less than Allah, and that which they worship and supplicate, less than Him or other than Him, it is falsehood. And that's a, the definition of La ilaha illallah. Meaning, don't ever translate La ilaha illallah, there's no God but Allah. This is a wrong translation. Because Allah don't deny, it's because of what it means when you say that, La ilaha fil wujudi illallah. You're saying in, in, in that type of definition, there is no deity in existence except Allah. There's other deities that exist, but it's deities that don't have the right of worship. Only Allah has the right of worship. That's why Allah says, that kept me anna Allah huwa al haq wa anna ma yad'una min dun. He said, that which they worship less than me. He didn't say it's, 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 it's don't exist. He said, for who al batil? It is falsehood. It is in vain. No reward, and it is in falsehood. It's not going to get him, gain him no reward in the hereafter. So this is the definition of that dua that we say that he's clarifying here. He says, after that, we open up with the open, we seek refuge of the law from the shaitan. And you say, I'll be laughing, shaitan. So in the next class, well, I've got two minutes. I, he, he says, we say, I'll be laughing, shaitan, and rajim. He says, I seek refuge with Allah from the curse shaitan. Before you start reciting, meaning, a'udhu, meaning, aludhu wa al-taji'u wa a'tasimu bika, ya Allah. It means, oh Allah, I seek your protection and guardianship. Mina shaitan al-rajim. From the shaitan, Satan al-rajim. Yani maturud al-muba'ad anu rahmat al one who's been chased from the mercy of Allah and forgiveness. Al-rajim, that's the meaning of al-rajim. A person that's maturud, he's been chased away. From Allah's mercy, distant from Him, from the rahmatillah. La yadurruni fi dini. So when you say this, you make this dua when reciting, before reciting, because you're asking Allah, don't allow shaitan to harm me in the practice of your deen. That's what that means. Wala dunyaya, nor to cause harm to you in your worldly affairs. That's the meaning of a'udhu billah. I seek refuge with Allah. That I seek refuge and protection and guardianship of Allah from Satan 
the enemy of Allah. Then he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He says, he names Allah, Bismillahir Rahman. Right? Meaning you're seeking a help with the name of Allah, the one who possess the rights of worship over all of his creation. The ba is lin isti'ana. The ba in bismillah is for seeking help. You're asking Allah to help you in your affairs. Ar-Rahman means du rahmatun wasi'ah. The one who has, the word Ar-Rahman means the one who possess expansive mercy. He possesses it. Ar-Rahim, ma'anahu du rahmatun khasa bil mu'mineen. Ar-Rahim means he has a mercy that's specific for the believers. He has a mercy that's specific for the believers. What, as Allah says, wa kana bil rahima, that Allah says about Himself that He is merciful to the believers. Surah Al Ahzab. Inna Allah bin nasi la ra'ufur rahim. Indeed, Allah is to the people truly the most kind and most merciful. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about the meaning of Al Fatiha in the next one. But inshallah ta'ala,